Patreon.com slash the walk-off podcast. Uh, $4 a month gets you in there. If you're <laughs> watching this right now and you haven't hit the like button, Billy, get on it. Bug your brother. Tell him to do the same. Whit Merrifield returning to KC for the first time since the Blue Jays acquired him at last year's trade deadline. The team that drafted him back in 2010, the team that developed him, right? And, and really, it should be quite a response from those Royals fans. I think that they are going to give him a standing ovation. I think that they're going to be on their feet and they're going to make him feel appreciated. He made his major league debut in 2016, the year after they won the World Series. And honestly, man, he really was like the only bright spot on the Royals for years. Yeah. He was the one dude where if you went to Kauffman Stadium, you were looking forward to see what Wit did. Two hit Wit. That's where he got that nickname was in Kansas City. He was a menace on the base path, right? He led the league, the American League in steals three years in a row with the Royals. He was a two-time All-Star in Kansas City. I just am excited to, to see the fans' appreciation of the guy. Yeah, it'll be a cool moment. Um, I'm sure he's going to start at second base at least the first game. Yeah, Pro I would probably say all so. four. I would think all four. I think that John Schneider is almost most certainly going to give him the opportunity to show these Kansas City fans what he can do. My guess is this is going to be an emotional game for the 34-year-old. And really the dream is here, and I, I think the Jays are, are really fingers crossed that his return to Kansas City is what kind of kicks this guy into gear in 2023. Yeah. He's only managed one hit in six plate appearances, but I think he's going to be given, given some time at second in this series. I think you're right. Um, slow start when he came over to Toronto at the end of last season after the trade deadline, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But finished strong. He finished very strong. He was a real difference maker in September. Uh, his season total, not season total, his Toronto total from last year in 44 games uh, led to a 281 batting average and uh, OPS mm -hmm. plus of 117. So despite the slow start, Finish quite he was strong. a very productive member of this Toronto Blue Jays team by the end of the season. Absolutely. So moving on from Whit Merrifield. Let's stick with Kansas four, City. Sticking with Kansas City. Big four game series coming up here for the Blue Jays. Of course, after losing two of three to St. Louis, a very good Cardinals team. They are going to a mediocre team at best in the Royals, and we are going to see a couple of the big question marks in this Blue Jays starting rotation be put to the test. Jose Barrios, of course, struggled mightily last year and is looking to right the ship that is his career currently, and that's what Blue Jays fans can hope for, is that he returns to those career numbers, those consistent career numbers that everyone in Minnesota was used to. He is going to be lined up against Brady Singer for the Kansas City Royals this year. And then, uh, or sorry, this game today. And then we see tomorrow, you say Kikuchi, the other big question mark mm -hmm. in this Blue Jays starting rotation, take the ball against Chris Bubeck in tomorrow's game. Are you excited to see what the Barrios and Kikuchi got up their sleeves here, bud? Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, you're like excitement might not be the word anxiety. <laughs> yeah. I mean, definitely I'll be close, be, be played close attention to this game. Um, singer for the Royals. Very good pitcher. Yes, he is. Uh, 3.23 ERA last year in a whip of 1.14. I mean, he's not getting Cy Young votes with those numbers, but no, but, uh, but he was one of their, he was definitely one of the Royals best pitchers last year. Royals have a pitching edge in this game. I'll mm -hmm. say that, right. I think pretty fairly. We'll say that, um, the rest of this series with Kikuchi versus Bubik, uh, 5.58 ERA and a whip of 1.7 for Chris Bubik. 
last year. So mm-hmm. they still probably have a pitching edge over Yusei Kikuchi. But, <laughs> um, and then we got Manoa versus Granky. What a matchup that's going to be. Oh, that is going to be so oh. fun. Old man Granky and his weirdness is going to be all over that mound. And I can't wait to see it. The EFIS pitch will come out. He'll be doing it's, some sort of weird thing for sure. It'll be such an entertaining <laughs> game. But yeah, as far as Barrios goes, I mean, yeah, I just want to see something to give progress. me confidence or give hope. Give me some or, progress. Yeah, steps in the right give direction. Give me some hope. Yeah. Yes. So, I don't know. It's just the uncertainty is what scares a guy, right? Mm-hmm. And those are the two biggest question marks in the rotation, so... And you know what? We kind of touched on it when we were talking Chris Bassett. After Chris Bassett's start, I feel like the pressure is maybe a little bit higher on Barrios and Kikuchi to come up here and and come up with the win, right? So the things, uh, Kevin Gosman and Jordan Lyles are going to be closing out this four-game series. The things that I would like to see in this series, and feel free to add your own here, mm-hmm. Adam, if you have any, I want to see a home run. I need to see this power in this lineup kind of kick into gear here. Um, I would love to see Kikuchi carry on a good spring and show, have a good showing, even if it's four or five innings, even if he's, he, he throws too many pitches and walks a couple guys. If he can just dodge bullets and stay out of the fire, that is a success in my mind. And Jose or Jose Kikuchi. Now I'm just adding, no, we're just combining them together here. Uh, you say monster. Kikuchi as for Jose Barrios, I would love to see progress from the spring. He had a rough spring. He had a rough WBC showing. If he can allow three runs and pitch five innings, I will take it to start this year. Yeah, I think the bats should wake up. I can't. Oh, excuse me. I need another coffee. I can't see us going another four games without a single home run. Like that no. has to come. Um, yeah, I think this is – the Royals are not a bad team. No. The way I feel like in my head I have them registered as being a bad team. They're but probably they are, a better team than most people give them credit for. Yeah, they're below average, but they're not – Yes. They're not the Athletics. They're not the, like, they're not the Pirates. Mm-hmm. Um, and they got some good young kids that uh, – what's that first baseman they got? Oh, Bobby Witt Jr. is Bobby Witt Jr. at shortstop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Prado, I think, is the other young guy. Yes. Um, this is a good young team on the way up, not to be taken lightly, but man, do I want to. I mean, we did our, our April predictions uh, a few days ago. I had this as a four game sweep for the Blue Jays. I know that's a tall ask. It's a tall ask. Even but, three and one. It, you know, like on the I, road I, is a big ask. Yeah, I, I I could see this being a split, and I know that would really upset a lot of I'm Blue be, Jays fans. I would be bummed out by a two and two series. Here. I would definitely be bummed out, but I could see it happening. Uh, my dream here is that we get a win in one of the Barrios or Kikuchi starts, and then Manoa and Gosman take the ball and run with it. That's the dream. I like it. Let Anything me- to add here before we wrap up? Uh, just worth noting, uh, Thursday's game is an afternoon game. So yes, midweek afternoon games, uh, sometimes sneak up on a guy, but yeah. So there you go. Noon okay. So mountain time, if you're on the East coast there, it's before we wrap up a big thank you to our sponsor left field brewing. If you're in Toronto and you have yet to try left field beer, you really should. It's one of my favorite when I was living there, leftfieldbrewery.ca. You go to their shop. You spend 55 bucks and then the free koozie is on us. All you got to use is the code walk off. Do that now. If you're thinking, uh, hey, I'm going to definitely buy some left field beer, you know, but maybe I'll do it in a week. We would love it if you just do it now. Use that code walk off and get that free koozie, baby. And also, by the way, if you are a member of the Patreon, a free beer on us anytime throughout the this 2023 season all you got to do is hit us up we'll give you the 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 details you need there and uh beer on the walk off that is at the tap room you have to physically go you do need to physically go to left field brewery 
Uh, we right. are such a going... good episode, and then we, I just totally fizzled us out at the end there. My apologies. No, no, no. This is how we always end our episodes in a whimper. In this a is whimper. what the this is what the ground crew expects of us at this point. Adam. In like a lion, <laughs> out like a lamb. That's what they say, right? <laughs> Before we wrap up, a big thank you to our sponsor, Left Field Brewing. If you're in Toronto and you have yet to try Left Field beer, you really should. It's one of my favorite when I was living there. Leftfieldbrewery.ca. You go to their shop, you spend 55 bucks, and then the free koozie is on us. All you got to use is the code WALKOFF. Do that now. 